Welcome back to the Knife Studio. Here it is. My name is Kyle Royer and I'm a master bladesmith. It looks really cool when you wire wheel it. Making my first ever sword. So let's embark on this epic edged adventure. I normally use one of these two little thingies here to hammer my guards on to get a really good fit. But these are way too short because they normally go over the tang. And my tang is about twice as long as a normal knife. So I'm making one out of a piece of pipe that I flattened. And now I'm gonna mill the end of it flat and then I'm gonna weld a cap on the end. It'll be kind of like one of these for hammering my guard on, only it'll be really long for this really long tank. Got the end welded up on here. Let's see if it'll fit onto the sword. Oh yeah, that'll work. So this will allow me to be able to hammer that guard on there once I get it ready for that stage. So right now my guard is currently a long way from that. I've got just the rough radius forged in. So the next thing I need to do on this guard is it comes to a point right here in the center. So I need to grind away a bunch of material right in here and get it to that shape that it needs to be. And then I can start fitting the guard to the blade. 20 minutes later. So now I have some flat uh, surfaces that I can reference off of. I milled some little tiny flat ledges right here. So if I put it on a flat surface like this, now it's nice and nice and flat and I can make lines and stuff on it. After I had the flat surfaces here and here, went over to the surface grinder and surfaced the um, part where the handle and stuff's gonna fit up too. So the next part is to figure out where the center is and mark that and then figure out where the bottom grind of the quillions need to stop and then start grinding a radius in here. I keep adding lines to this guard to uh, reference where different lines need to end and stuff just to make sure everything comes out uniform. I went ahead and milled the sides of the guard just so I could do layout and stuff on it and be able to have it sit there square with everything else. Drew a line a quarter inch down because I wanted this curve right here to come up about a quarter of an inch to a point. And then I drew some lines up here to help me know where that where that radius needs to end. This way and this way. And I've got a matching on both sides, so I should be getting close to taking out this big chunk of material in here and getting the face of the guard shaped. Just want to make sure I do it in the right process and get it all even. Two hours later. Got the pattern roughed in here that I uh, drew out. The next thing I want to do is get a uh, get a backer put up against this round wheel so I can hold it square against the round wheel and uh, clean up curves I put on each side of the guard here. So I need to get a backer lined up on here. I don't have a horizontal grinder. It'd be uh, probably a lot easier to do this on a horizontal grinder. I'm going to call that square right there. It's plus or minus a few thousandths, but that just could be for me applying more pressure to one side or the other. I've got these curves roughed in now. Uh, I want to make sure that they're both precise though. So the way I do that is a little trick with the paper. Just like the, the trick I did to get the tip of the blade symmetrical, do the same thing here. Set it down on some paper, draw some lines. Take it, flip it over, and put it up to those lines and see if it matches. It's getting really close. Not quite there yet. There's a little spot right here where it doesn't go up to the line. There's a little spot right here that goes over the line. So that lets me know that right there, I need to remove a little bit more material right there. Probably a little bit right here. A little bit right there. finally uniform on both sides. That took forever. So yeah, guys, if it seems like everything just falls into place for me, it really doesn't. 
a lot of times this is what it's like. Anybody can do it if, if you stick with it long enough, but it is not always easy. Each one of these lines on here represents me coming over here, drawing lines around this piece, looking at the low spots or the high spots, taking it back over to the grinder, grinding it, bringing it back, doing another line. So I took this thing to the grinder a bunch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 times. 23 times over to the grinder just to get the radius the same on both sides. The next thing we can do is start doing layout for where the uh, blade will fit onto the guard. I have to be really careful and do the layout really well. And then start milling out the slot for the guard. Part of the problem though is the area where the, the blade meets the guard on most of my knives is normally shaped like that. The problem with this that's gonna make it extra hard, the area that fits up to the guard on this one is shaped kind of like that. So it's gonna be a lot harder to fit this guard because I won't be able to just mill and, and do my normal stuff. I'll have to do a lot more hand filing, I bet, in order to get these tapered areas. And something I like to do on my guards that you guys might have seen before is I like to have the Ricasso area fit into the guard about 10 thousandths of an inch so, that, so it'll have a really nice tight fit. Um, and I actually recess that in there by hammering my guard on until it leaves a mark and going in there with the, the dental burr and removing material until the blade physically fits into the guard. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do that on this, but it's gonna be a lot more complicated because we got this point coming up and we've got bevels on each side here coming down. to the blade. I've spent a lot of time, this is definitely the most complicated guard fit I've ever had to do. Lots of hammering it on and uh, removing material inside with the engraving burr, uh, the high speed dental burr rather. It's got a really unique shape to the guard, um, which adds a lot of difficulty. You may have seen two little dots on the back side here. That indicates which side is up. I also have an arrow on the uh, tang. So I can put this on the same way every time. It's, it's nearly symmetrical, but not quite as far as fitting on here. I spent a lot of time doing all the layout on this. A lot of time, like two or three hours yesterday, having a good layout to follow made it so that the guard came out centered right on the blade, like right on the money almost perfectly without hardly adjusting it. So I'm getting ready to hammer this on here for pretty much the final time. I think I've got the final fit done. Need to hammer it on one more time using that new uh, extra long smash pipe hammery jig thing we made. A nice tight fit. Got a whole bunch of layers of duct tape wrapped around this so I can clamp it in the vise without hurting my blade. Do a little inspection, see how it's looking. Oh man, it looks amazing. I am really happy with that. That was the most challenging guard fit ever. And it looks like it it looks like it's integral with the blade. I mean it's it's as good as it gets. Couldn't really ask for it to be any better. I think I'm just about to the stage where I can start making the front spacer now and getting the pommel figured out and maybe start fitting the handle and, and start thinking of uh, how I'm gonna get the handle on here and everything. I've got a chunk of metal cut off here for the front spacer. I'm gonna have uh, the front spacer be somewhere around three quarter inches thick. I've also marked out where that piece is gonna go. I've uh, made it a little bit longer than I need the final piece to be, it's about an inch and a half long. I marked out the center of it and marked out where the tang goes on there. So now I'm gonna take it over the milling machine and uh, mill out a slot for it to fit up on the tang. Currently, 
It fit perfect. And then I surface ground it and I think there's a burr on there that's making it fit tight. I need a bigger workbench if I'm gonna be doing this. One of the next things I'm gonna do though while the forge is running is take this inch and a half square bar of steel that I have and upset it and forge it into a round piece for the pommel. I need about an inch and three quarter diameter for this end of the pommel, so it's a little small. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and upset it and get it forged to the right size. To the forge! Yeah, it's a little scary. A little scary, it'll come flying out of there at me. The blade is two pounds, nine ounces, not including the uh, guard and stuff going on there. This thing is, well, it's over five pounds because the scale only goes up to five pounds. So I bring my sword to seven and a half pounds, plus another pound there, eight and a half, eight and a half, nine pounds. <laughs> Definitely gotta lose a little weight on this thing. It's probably gonna end up being somewhere around a pound or so. I'm not really sure though. It's just five times lighter than it is now. <laughs> For this guard, a little too wide. I had to figure out a way to be louder. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so I want to rewind the clock a little bit here. I actually, that was a loud noise. It would fit because the guard was, I can't do this, can't do it. I understand you're frustrated. So many unanswered questions. The video left you hanging. You simply need to subscribe so you can get notified of the most recent videos. Thank you for watching.